Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Bowser Jr. Fan 13, and welcome to my review on Deadpool and Wolverine. So I originally saw the film uh, back in its uh, release date. Uh, well, it released like July 26, right? I saw it on the 27th on the weekend. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, I was gonna go see it with uh, Be Cold and uh, Future Damon, but uh, they were too busy, so I had to go by myself, which was a bit sad, but I still enjoyed the movie. So, Deadpool has finally had his third movie. All right. The first movie, I loved it. It was amazing. Second movie, I mean, sure, some people may say it's not as good as the first movie, but I thought it was a pretty decent sequel. It was also, like, real funny. If I'm going to be honest, I think the sequel was way more funnier than the first film. As for Deadpool and Wolverine, let me just say that this film did not disappoint. I mean, sure, when you think of the MCU, you're just kind of afraid of what type of you know, things that Disney's gonna do to ruin the film, but luckily, Ryan Reynolds himself was cooking with this film. Oh, speaking of Ryan Reynolds, not only does he make his return for Deadpool, you got Hugh Jackman once again reprising his role as Wolverine, and it is so awesome. So, yeah, um, here's my review on Deadpool and Wolverine, so let's go ahead and get started. Of course... While talking about the film, we gotta talk about its story and plot, so that way you guys get a bit of an understanding of what's going on. Okay, so the plot of the film is that, well, funny enough, it starts off with Deadpool digging up uh, Wolverine's uh, skeleton and dead remains, and then proceeding to beat up uh, the soldiers off the, the TVA with it. It was so funny. Oh my god, but... Um, if you guys don't know, the TVA is uh, the Time Variant uh, Association. I think that's what it's called. No, the Time Variant Authorities. Well, either one. Like they're off of the show Loki. Um, it's uh, on Disney Plus. You can't miss it. Anyways, um, so after that, that was actually that first scene we saw was a bit of a setup or a bit of an early scene to what happens next because we get uh, stuff that happened uh, earlier. So basically, Deadpool wanted to join the Avengers, but Happy, uh, Tony Stark's assistant, basically turned him down because Deadpool doesn't like fully understand uh, what it means to be a hero and like what it means to like, uh, you know, uh, not just saving the world, but working as a team and all that stuff. I mean, I'm kind of forgetting a bit of the details, but he got sadly turned away from uh, joining the Avengers. And not only that, he's also going through a bit of a midlife crisis. So Peter was um, at his job, was asking him, hey, come on, why don't you do like old times, like do your whole mercenary thing, like how you used to be. But unfortunately, um, Deadpool doesn't want to go through his uh, old superhero ways or his old mercenary life because he wants to live a normal, decent life since he's got everything he's want. He's got his uh, whole friends and companions uh, by his side. He just wants to live a normal, peaceful life uh, since, well, he feels like uh, doing this whole superhero shtick isn't uh, going out for him. And as for the rest of the characters, everyone's just the same, you know. You got a uh, Negasonic teenage fan with her girlfriend that likes to keep on saying hi to uh, Wade all the time. It's still pretty funny. Uh, Colossus is doing pretty decent for himself. Um, then you got the blind old lady. She's doing all right. Uh, making up all these funny names for doing you know what. I mean, I can't say it on YouTube because, you know... And unfortunately for, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, Deadpool and his girlfriend, Vanessa, they're apparently no longer together in this timeline. Uh, I mean, even though he did stop her from dying, it seems that they're no longer in a relationship. And it's probably, and it's mostly because, well, yeah, I don't know. The relationship wasn't going well, but 
uh, spoiler alert, it does, um, he does try to fix it in the end, but, yeah. Um, anyways, um, so, in the middle of, uh, Deadpool's birthday, um, he gets interrupted by the Time Variant Authorities, or the TVA, from the Loki TV show series, and basically... They take him to their headquarters where he, he meets this guy who needs his help because his world is being destroyed. Now, I'm not sure why or uh, I thought uh, they were I thought um, so basically his whole world's being destroyed. Uh, I thought it was being destroyed because, well, you know, because Deadpool in the last film, he was using Cable's uh, belt to, like, time travel and all that stuff. It caused a whole bunch of mischief. But apparently, no, because apparently it's losing its anchor. Well, that's what it says. The timeline's losing its anchor. So Deadpool has to team up with uh, Wolverine to save the day. Unfortunately, he goes to all these timelines with all these different Wolverines until he eventually comes up to the Wolverine of this film, who basically became a drunken, saddened man who doesn't want to be bothered. So Deadpool ends up taking him against his own will, only to be fooled by the TVA, sort of, and basically they get locked up in this abyss of a world where it, they're stuck in the middle of a desert, and then the two of them, Deadpool and Wolverine, they start their fight against each other. And I'm not going to lie, the fight it was pretty funny. Like, being thrown in the 20th Century Fox logo. <laughs> oh my god, that was so hilarious. But, yeah, in the middle of their fight, as they're just ripping each other apart, um, they're interrupted when they see a cloaked man. So we get unmasked, and I see this cloaked man is wearing a blue outfit. And I was like, wait a second. That guy looks familiar. He looks like he's off of the Fantastic Four. And yeah, so basically they get um, ambushed by a whole bunch of uh, old X-Men villains. They got ambushed by Toad, Pyro, and the Juggernaut. There's also Sabretooth. Uh, the Sabretooth and Wolverine fight, we thought we were going to get something pretty cool. But we got something completely anti uh, anticlimactic when... As soon as the fight start, Wolverine chopped his head off. Damn, that was disappointing. So Pyro was about to attack um, uh, the gang, but um, the cloaked man ends up uh, getting ready to fight. Now, I'm thinking to myself, like, this has to be Mr. Fantastic because, well, the outfit. Uh, but I'm just being stupid because I did not recognize... Uh, Mr. Fantastic. I thought this was the old actor who played Mr. Fantastic from the old Fantastic Four movies and not the new one from the MCU. And then Deadpool's like, oh, he's about to say it. He's about to say it. Avengers Assemble. And I was like, wait, wait. Avengers Assemble? Wait, like, is he talking about Captain America? But then uh, before uh, he could finish uh, saying it, the dude said, flame on. And I was like, oh, wait a second. That's Human Torch. <laughs> yeah, they brought back the Human Torch and his act. Well, Chris Evans, the actor that played Captain America, actually plays Human Torch in the original film. And I'm not going to lie, I actually did not know that, or I actually forgot that Chris Evans actually used to play uh, Human Torch. But still, that's a pretty awesome call back in reference. But then the three of them gets captured, and they're taken to this group of uh, other mutants. Uh, I think Psylocke was there. There's that uh, red-skinned dude um, that looks like uh, a, the devil. I have no idea who he is. I forgot his name. And then there's also uh, the leader of the group, uh, Cassandra Nova, who is apparently uh, the twin sister or the, the unborn twin sister to Charles Xavier or Professor X. I was like, wait, I've never seen this character before because, uh, I'm sorry guys, like, is she from like the comics or something? Because I have no information on this character, but all I know is that she's uh, Professor X's twin sister and she hated her brother oh so much. I mean, yeah, okay, but yeah, it's none of that. So basically, she's the villain of the, uh, of the movie and her whole shtick is that she wants to... I think she wants to destroy all the world or destroy all timelines or something or try to alter uh, 
the, the timelines into whatever she wants. I mean, I, I, I'm a bit confused on this. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, listen, uh, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really care for this villain all that much. She felt a little bit underwhelming, but... That didn't stop me from not enjoying the film because the comedy was still freaking amazing. Like, let's start with the fact that Human Torch got freaking wasted and got his whole skin peeled off because of Deadpool making lies about, um, about, uh, you know, him talking trash about, uh, Cassandra. And, yeah, so basically she used her psychic powers to end Human Torch's life, which, damn, okay. But anyways, um, getting back into the film, Deadpool and Wolverine, they make their escape. They get into a car. I think it was a Honda Civic. And as they're driving in the car, uh, Deadpool was talking about how he made some uh, wish. And then uh, Wolverine's like, what did you say? And then he said he made some wish saying that uh, he's going to, like, because, you know, he's going to try to save his own world. And Wolverine's gonna have his world saved. Um, but yeah, it didn't go well because it starts getting into a heated argument. I forgot about the whole uh, thing, but here's uh, one of the funniest parts about this scene. Oh my god, Wolverine freaking cooked Deadpool in this one scene. I mean, at this rate, it's been memed to death. Everybody is re uploading clips of this iconic scene, and it is so funny. The way Wolverine was shutting up Deadpool and calling him out, saying stuff like, No wonder the Avengers t- would take you or the X Men, and even calls him about calls him out about how he's not even um how he can never be a real hero and he can't save the world and even talking trash about how he can't even save a relationship with his own girl i was busting out with laughter from that scene oh my god he got him to shut up real good and what deadpool had to say about all that he was like i'm gonna fight you now and he's like Oh, are you? And it immediately punches him, and then it gets into a whole fight where they're just fighting in the car, and they're just tearing it apart. And, oh my god, it's so freaking funny. But then, as they're brutally damaged from each other's wounds, and they pass out, um, they're then... Wait. Oh, okay. Earlier they met. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't believe I forgot this one scene. As they're making their escape, they did run into a Deadpool variant called Nice Pool, where this is guy called Nice Pool, who's the opposite of Deadpool. Like he's a very nice human being who likes peace and all that stuff. And he has a pet dog, which Deadpool ends up taking. Um, but. Yeah, so anyways, uh, as they uh, start to recover from their wounds, apparently you find out that they've been taken by a group of mercenaries who are trying to go against Cassandra Nova. And oh my god, it's a bunch of familiar faces. Spoilers ahead! Please skip uh, skip to this part of the video, or at least cut away to this video if you haven't seen this movie. I mean, I made it clear that there was going to be spoilers in here, so please, leave at your own risk. <clears throat> so, anyways, so the mercenary group that's supposed to be going up against Cassandra and her forces, we got a bunch of familiar faces. We got my boy Gambit. <laughs> oh my god, I was so happy to see Gambit in this film. And he was also played by, I heard that there were rumors that there was this one actor who really really wanted to play Gambit. It was also part of the um, original Gambit project movie that that I think Fox was trying to do, but it got canceled and stuff. But, bro, he finally got what he wanted. He got to be Gambit, and I'm not going to lie. His performance was amazing. He definitely sounded like Gambit, and he was pretty funny, too. Like, there was even memes about him as well. The Gambit actor is just amazing. And on top of that, we also got the return of Elektra, I've not watched Daredevil, and I don't know too much about Elektra, sadly, but it was pretty neat to see her return. But on top of that, we also got my boy freaking Blade! And what's the best part? Blade is being played by his old actor, Wesley Snipes. Wesley freaking Snipes reprises his role as Blade. Oh my god, I was so freaking... My mind was blown from this. Like, it was insane. But apparently, yeah, so 
the person who was leading this mercenary group was actually a returning character from uh, the movie Logan. And if you can guess, yep, it's freaking uh, uh, Logan's daughter, um, Laura, a.k.a. X-23. And only now, like... It's basically the actor that played X-23 in the last film, only now she's a little older. And yeah, that uh, makes sense. And it's pretty cool to see X-23 um, back. And she also gives uh, Wolverine like the motivation that he needed to like uh, basically get his head back in the gang and stuff. Like basically get him motivated to help them fight. So then they all start fighting, and man, the fight was so freaking amazing. So their plan was that they were trying to get the Juggernaut's helmet um, uh, so that they could uh, put it on uh, Cassandra Nova so that they could uh, stop her psychic powers. But we also get, so after uh, like Wolverine tries to deal with her, we actually get a backstory of why Wolverine was so emo and so depressed and why he was the way he was in the film. So apparently we find out that this version of Wolverine, he actually let the X-Men down. Like all the members of the X-Men died, you know, Cyclops, Jean, uh, Storm, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Beast, all those characters that we've grown to love from the old movies, they apparently died. Um, said that a bunch of humans killed them off and he basically abandoned them and he regretted uh, leaving them. That's why he's wearing the iconic suit that he's wearing uh, in the film because it was something that, uh, you know, that uh, Cyclops wanted him to wear. Uh, so he's wearing it as a memory for his friends and it makes me really feel bad for him. And it, although they don't explain how exactly the X-Men died, he said that they were killed by humans. Like, how exactly? Like, were they using those devices from Deadpool 2 that basically makes a mutant's powers not work so that it's easier to kill them? Or did they just freaking use the Sentinels? Because those two um, theories seem to be, like, the most likely causes for the X-Men's death, as far as I'm concerned. But Juggernaut's helmet gets on uh, Cassandra. She surrenders and then uses Doctor Strange's ring to send Deadpool back into his universe. Only for Deadpool and Wolverine to have to fight multiple Deadpool variants. Like, they had to fight all these different Deadpool variants. The cowboy, a freaking little small child. Uh, I forgot most of the other variants. I think there was a baby Deadpool. There was a freaking... Uh, uh, I don't remember some of them. Lady Deadpool. Um, you know, they have all these Deadpool variants, which is pretty cool. But you know what? Out of all the Deadpool variants, you want to know who I wanted to see the most? If you're going to put a Deadpool variant, you might as well throw in Gwenpool. I mean, yeah, I know it's too soon to have Gwenpool in here. But come on. Gwenpool is one of, uh, if not one of the more iconic uh, comic book characters. And if you at least put Gwenpool here for at least a little cameo, I would have been satisfied. Or, heck, you might as well add her as a secondary character uh, to Deadpool and Wolverine, and she could, like, basically help out. I mean, I didn't mind X-23 uh, returning, but adding Gwenpool here would have been uh, even more cool. So anyways, the final battle ensues, and basically, Cassandra, she gets to the TVA's lair, I think, and she's trying to destroy the, the reactor core to make everything go haywire, but Deadpool tries to sacrifice himself to basically fix the timeline, but uh, Wolverine uh, ends up chasing after him, and they both sacrifice themselves, which, thanks to their healing factors, they survive the explosion, and they end up saving the world. And they also end up defeating uh, Cassandra Nova. I think they basically killed her or something. Yeah. Yeah, she's basically done for. As for the dude that basically set them up, the TVA basically arrested him. You know, and uh, the dog comes home with Deadpool and Wolverine. The day is saved. Um, they're all chill and stuff. Yeah, as I said before, Deadpool's relationship with Vanessa is fixed. All the other characters, they're all doing pretty fine. X-23 decides to hang out with Wolverine and Deadpool and their timeline. And yeah, that's basically the end of the film. 
oh, and there's also a credit scene that shows uh, Hugh Jackman's uh, experience with uh, playing Wolverine for the first time when they did the X-Men movies, and that's pretty cool. And we get a little post credit scene where Deadpool basically tells everyone that he wasn't lying about how uh, how Human Torch was basically, uh, you know, talking all that smack about Cassandra Nova, because apparently what Deadpool was saying was true. He was talking smack to her, and oh my god, it was so freaking funny. I was like, ah, Deadpool, you, you really got me there. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that's basically the end of De Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, overall, I say that the movie itself was just... It's amazing. I loved it. Every little scene of it. The fights were just so amazing. The violence was intense. The comedy was just... It was top notch. I was laughing with the theater, and there were so many scenes that were just making me laugh so much. <laughs> oh my god, it was just... It was amazing. I, I love it. Um, I didn't really care for Cassandra Nova. I thought she was not that much of a big villain. I mean, like, I, 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 didn't, I don't mean like she wasn't threatening at all. It's just I felt like she didn't leave that much of an impact to me as a villain. And neither did the guy in the TVA. But, out, but outside of that, it was cool to see some returning characters like Colossus. It was cool to see Human Torch, uh, Juggernaut, Psylocke, Gambit, Blade, and uh, freaking um, Elektra. Like seeing all those characters uniting in this film, I could have not been more happier. I mean, there were a few other characters I was like hoping to see, like, oh, uh, I don't know, like. Uh, uh, was there a character I really wanted to see? I mean, well, I mean, I did want to see Magneto, sort of, but he's dead. Well, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I did kind of want to see Cable. I wanted to know how Cable was doing, like, you know, after the second movie. Like, did his timeline get restored or something like that? And what happened to Russell? Like, you know, the kid that had the fire powers? I wanted to know what happened to him because, man, like, he was a pretty cool character in the second film. I wanted to know what happened to him after all those years. But, yeah, that's basically all I have to say about Deadpool and Wolverine. If I have to give this movie a rating, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It was a really good movie. I mean, I definitely recommend it to those who love the Marvel films, those who love Deadpool, those who love Wolverine. Go watch this film. It's definitely worth your time. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say for this video, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you love this video, then you know the drill. Uh, um, you know, like this video, comment on how cool it was, share it with everyone, and don't forget to subscribe uh, for more videos like this. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, everyone.